Hey there, Bobby Hunt 3, bluelightdiet.com, and in this video, I am going to review the Christopher Kluse Tom Brady Blue Light Blocking Glasses. You're going to see if they work or not, if Tom threw a touchdown, or he threw an interception with these glasses. So let's get into it. When you order, the Tom Brady blue light blockers from the Christopher Kluse website. They come in this great case. This case is awesome. And when we open up the case, we get these glasses. And let me tell you something about these glasses. These frames are handmade and they are the best blue light blocking frames I have ever put on in my entire life. They are heavy, they are thick, thick, they are smooth, they fit well, they just feel good. I have never worn a better pair of frames, so I can guarantee you one thing. If you order glasses from Christopher Kluse, their frames are fantastic. Okay, now let's talk about these lenses and let's measure to see if they actually block blue light. One thing I want to tell you first is that blue light in nature, in sunlight, is not a problem. You need blue light during the day. It helps wake you up. It helps make you stay alert. It helps optimize your hormones. It helps keep your circadian rhythm rolling. You secrete cortisol. You suppress melatonin, so you stay awake during the daytime, ready to rock and roll, ready to sort some touchdowns like Brady does, okay? You don't find it at night because the sun goes down. So when the sun goes down at night, there is no blue light. You don't want any blue light at night because what that blue light then does at night would be suppress your melatonin so you never can go to sleep. You never can regenerate, all right? So you always want some blue light during the day and you want to block all the blue light at night. Now, the problem with blue light during the day is that when you're out in sunshine, when you have natural light from windows coming through the windows, that blue light is different than the light that comes from your text screens, than the light that comes from TVs and phones and those energy efficient LED lights. And let me show you that right now. So this is called a spectrometer. And what a spectrometer does is measure light that you are exposed to. It measures, it's kind of like a light nutrient profile. Okay, Brady? Now, Tommy, this thing costs about 1500 bucks. I know to put a dent in your Tampa Bay salary, but it's well worth it because you can do these experiments yourself. So I'm going to take the nutrient profile of natural light in my house right now. So I've got lots of windows here. Bodie's getting some light right now. And we're gonna see what it looks like. It basically looks like this. So what you can see, and this looks like kind of the light outside, it's just a little bit filtered, but do you see how full that profile is? Look at, there's lots of blue. There's also green, yellow, and then notice there's tons of red. Now this is a super important lesson for you because in nature, in sunlight, you're always gonna have almost equal amounts of blue and red light. And that's because blue light is very stimulatory and red light is very regenerative. So blue light causes some damage and red light repairs that damage. And the sun, nature did that perfectly. It packaged light perfectly. So the damage that blue light causes is repaired by the red light. Now, the problem with tech screens is that, as you'll see in a second, all that red light and infrared light disappears. So let's go to a computer. Here's a computer screen right now. And this is, it's the same with an LED light or your iPhone, or anything like that. So when I set this up to look at the computer screen, we are going to take the light profile of um, 
this computer screen right now. Now notice that this is what natural light coming through a window looks like. Notice how full that is, how there's lots of blue, but also lots of red to counter the blue. Now let's look at a text screen. So when I take the profile of the computer, boom, look at that. Now, what do you notice about that? Almost all of the red disappears. So the red's not in there because the red and infrared, uh, uh, removing it saves you some energy costs, some money. What else do you see? That huge spike of blue. And that is the main problem in why you want to, number one, wear daytime blue blockers during the day and you want to wear nighttime blue blockers at night that get rid of all of that blue. Now, uh, that's nice, Bodie. Thanks for doing that during this filming here. Um, hey, <laughs> now, what happens with blue light blocking glasses is they take out, they should take out that huge spike of blue light for daytime blue blocking um, function. Because that spike is like a giant lineman sacking Brady and then poking you in the eye with his blue light finger. And why is that? Well, because it's something called blue light toxicity. And blue light toxicity comes in the range of about, let's see here, as, we can, as you can see, right there, 410 nanometers, it starts, and then you see where it peaks? It peaks in the 430, 440, 450 nanometer range. So that's right where this spike is on most tech screens. See that big spike? That's right around 440, 450 nanometers. That's where the most toxic part of the blue light is, that's the blue light hazard. Okay, so let's see if Tom Brady's blue light blocking glasses protect you from the blue light hazard. So here's the spike. And we, these are Tom Brady's glasses. So when we take these glasses, and you put them on and you watch the computer, you're watching the computer that has that big spike. We'll see if that big spike disappears. It should be disappearing if these glasses work. No, it doesn't disappear. It didn't change at all. In fact, what really changed was just down in that little spot there, 380 nanometers right there. That's what it blocked, 380 to 400 nanometers. So these glasses block a little bit of the blue. It's technically the violet spectrum of light, but it's not the part of the blue spectrum that is most damaging, which is the 430, 440, 450 nanometers, which is what comes out of tech screens. Tech screens do not contain lots of the light that these Tom Brady blue light blocker glasses block. It, it's, it's stupid, they're, they're worthless, the, the lenses are. Now let me show you what Tom Brady could do to fix these lenses, okay? So you need, Tom Brady's lenses are pretty clear, okay? In order to block the bad part of the blue light from tech screens, you need glasses that are at least an amberish color. So watch what happens when we do these glasses with, with an amber color here, okay? So we see that the peak of blue light is all the way at the top of the screen. So when we do this, these glasses, look at how they have reduced 
that peak of bad blue light there. And that's what you want if you're inside during the daytime looking at tech. You don't want to block all of the blue light, but you want to reduce that blue light spike enough. You can even go a little bit crazier with yellow lenses for the daytime. And if we see what yellow does, yellow will take out most of that blue light spike. So if you're surrounded by lots of tech, then yellow might be something you want to do because it comes in, it starts to let blue light in right about 470 nanometers. And again, you look at that and that's right after the danger zone. The dangers have gone away. Now, at nighttime, you never want to wear Tom Brady's glasses. You never want to wear yellow or even the kind of the amber lens glasses because at nighttime, you don't want to see any blue light at all because what does blue light do at nighttime? Well, at nighttime, that blue light suppresses your melatonin. So right here, right there is the action spectrum for melatonin suppression. As, as you can see, right about that 464 nanometer mark, right in the middle of blue light, is what suppresses your melatonin the most. And you need melatonin for sleep, rest, and regeneration at night. So we see melatonin doesn't start to stop being suppressed until right around the 520 nanometer mark, and then it pretty much goes away at 550. So for nighttime, these blue blockers don't block anywhere near that much. The Tom Brady's don't, and neither do the yellows. What you need at nighttime in order to be in that safe um, range you need a pair of blue blockers that are orange to red in color. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what happens when you do orange and red blue blockers at nighttime. So if we set this up here, here's the wavelength, remember, okay? So it's 450, you wanna get rid of all that, okay, and you want a lot of it up to about 530 nanometers right there, so a little bit in the green. We want all that to disappear at nighttime because that comes right about here, and that means that when you block that light, your melatonin is not being suppressed. So when you put on these glasses at nighttime, an orangish, reddish color lens, we find that Boom, all of that blue light and all of that green light goes away right around the 530 nanometer mark, which on this graph right here is where the, the melatonin suppression peak starts to just go away and disappear. So the moral of the story is, number one, Tom Brady, you didn't just throw an interception, you threw a pick six with these lenses. It wasn't even a pick six. It was a pick six in the Super Bowl on the last play of the game when you were up by five points to lose the Super Bowl. So you need to change these lenses. They simply do not block the blue light that matters to you, specifically at nighttime, they block none of the blue light. Your melatonin is going to be suppressed at nighttime. You're going to have circadian rhythm disruption if you wear these clear Tom Brady blue light blockers at night. If you wear them in the daytime, you still are going to get blue light toxicity because they do not block the part of the spectrum that matters. They block some of that stuff down here, which doesn't really matter too much at all. So Brady, what you need to do, or actually have Giselle do it, she's a little more into health than you and probably a little more thorough too, is you need to turn these lenses, these clear lenses, you need to make them amber 
for daytime use. And then for nighttime, you should offer a nighttime pair of these as well, because these are fantastic frames. You need to use an orange or a red lens, or a reddish orange lens, okay? So this, unfortunately, has been a bad review for the Cluse Tom Brady blue light blocking lenses. As you've seen, they don't work. They don't block the blue light that they're supposed to block, but they are great, fantastic frames. And if Tom, if you change these lenses, I will take this review down and re-review your lenses. But again, you can do this, and you're probably as mad as you look right there in the picture right now. You can do this yourself with a spectrometer. You can see that I'm not just giving you crap here because you are the greatest quarterback of all time. And that's hard to say because I thought Dan Marino forever was the greatest quarterback of all time. But in terms of blue blocker glasses, big time interception, big time pick six, you need to update these lenses. This has been Bobby Hunt 3, bluelightdiet.com. This has been the review of the Tom Brady blue light blocking glasses. You can find great glasses on my blog at bluelightdiet.com. You can also take a blue light toxicity test right on my website that will estimate how blue light toxic you are. All right, have a good day.